Hello, this is Sherry Fletcher, and today we're going to discuss the federal fish hatcheries that were located below Elephant Butte Dam State Park. This is an example of what the fish hatcheries looked like in the late 1950s and the early 1960s. Why were the fish hatcheries needed? There was conditions in reservoirs that were not favorable to the re due to the rising and falling of the water, which usually occurred during normal spawning seasons. So propagation of warm water fish such as black bass, crappie, and catfish, were, they needed a place where they could be raised to be fingerlings and then released back into the lakes in New Mexico. The fish hatchery, the federal fish hatchery, was a CCC project and it was set up uh, by a Thomas Nelson who moved here from Del Rio, Texas and took on the job as being the fish hatchery superintendent. The construction, which was part of a CCC project, actually started in 1937 at Camp BR-8, which was a camp that built variety of of structures around Elephant Butte State Park to provide recreational areas for the for the fishermen and the people who came to view the water at the Elephant Butte Lake. The properties at the fish hatchery have also been added to a historical register and some of them that were contributing was the residence for the fish hatchery supervisor. There was an office, a garage, storerooms. One of the noticeable buildings that is left is the holding house. There are stone line drainage ditches that individuals can still walk past if they enjoy the Paso del Rio walking area, which is now below the dam and has replaced the fish hatchery. Here's an example of the, the raceways that were, were built to move the, the fingerlings and the fry from one pond to another pond. The holding house was built between 1937 and 1939 and one can still see the foundation and the flat roof. It's a beautiful old building. Here's an example of the an early newspaper clipping from either the El Paso Times or the Albuquerque Tribune. Uh, it talks about the fisherman's paradise that was beginning with the spawning of all the fingerlings that were located in the ponds below, the, below Elephant Butte Dam. The residents of the area had a Pueblo Revival style home it was spacious. It had CCC rock work and curbs, and yard pavement, and there was a barbecue grill in the backyard. Here's an example of the different types of advertisement that was offered by local newspapers when bass were moved from the federal fish hatcheries to populate the, cha the canals which were above El Paso. Here is Mr. Riddles who owned Riddles Drug Store which at one time was located up on Main Street. Mr. Riddle was the uh, president of the Rotary Club and this was one of their projects of providing fries or fingerlings to stock the canals around El Paso with bass. Starting in the 19, late 1930s, early 1940s, uh, the government of the Fish and Wildlife Service was uh, planning to have better 
fishing after the war and so effectively they changed the federal fish hatcheries into a division of fish culture and also a division of the fishery industry for commercial fisheries in the United States. In the 1950s, the, uh, there was a drought, a very significant drought in New Mexico and in the southwest. Around August of 1953, the lake fell to below 10,000 acre feet. And on the headlines of one of the papers in 1956 from Las Cruces, they were talking about the lake with being so shallow was breeding poison, which had proven fatal to 8,000 ducks within the area. So there was a time when things were changing. The weather was not cooperating and the runoff was not there. And the, the, there had to be a reorganization on where to put the fingerlings and the fries of the fish that were being hatched in the hatcheries. Here's an example of an open letter to fishermen asking that a permanent pool of water be set so that there would always be uh, in the neighborhood of 50,000 acre feet to support the fish that were in the lake as the water is owned by the farmers and the dam at that time was still not owned by the farmers but now it is but it's run by the Bureau of Reclamation and State Parks of New Mexico are supervise the surface of the water. Here's a picture of what it looked like in the early docks when the water was at an all-time low in the 1950s. An example of the Pueblo style buildings at the fish hatchery. Presently there are several ponds that do hold water and this is a nice example of how it looks like if one was to take a walk in the evening. Mr. Nelson ended his long service after 43 years in the Federal Fish Hatchery and retired in Albuquerque. Again, an early picture of what the fish hatcheries look like and what the ponds look like before they were reorganized and falling under another jurisdiction. In post-1975, newspapers would indicate that the holding ponds were still holding some fish. State Park had taken over the management and the surface of the water and the facilities and the campgrounds and the farmers still own the water. Thank you for spending some time with us today and we hope that we have added some knowledge of our area and perhaps uh, there'll be more questions about the fish hatchery area and that will spark more interest in the area. Thank you.